Hello everybody, we'll demonstrate how to utilize Microsoft Whiteboard in this video. Microsoft Whiteboard, what is it? It's essentially a digital canvas that can be used freely to combine ideas and content. The simplest way to conceptualize it is probably as a whiteboard, similar to the kind of board you could find in an office or classroom, where you may collaborate with people and write ideas. With the exception of being a physical whiteboard, it is located in the cloud and allows for remote collaboration. We'll start by examining Whiteboard's functionality within Microsoft Teams. You'll most likely utilize this there, and it makes advantage of Whiteboard's web functionality. After examining that, we're going to go on and examine the Whiteboard app. It needs to be installed, but it has a few additional features than the web version. I'm in a Microsoft Teams meeting. You know, using a whiteboard to brainstorm would be really beneficial. How can we start the whiteboard that is located above the meeting controls? Now let's select the share content icon. This causes the sharing tray to open and we may share any kind of content. Tucked away on the far right hand side, there's the option to share a whiteboard. Let's give it a click. The Microsoft whiteboard opens as a result. I can choose between two options. I could just act as the presenter and I am unable to work with anyone on the whiteboard or I could have others collaborate with me. I'd like to work on this brainstorming session with other people, so I'll see to it that that gets selected. This now leaves me into a blank canvas and the world is my oyster. I'm finally able to begin my brainstorming session. Whiteboard on the web is the version of the program that is utilized in Microsoft Teams. The app has more features than this one does. The good news is that it's quite simple to use and it has the majority of the essential features. The majority of users will most likely wind up utilizing Whiteboard that's integrated in Microsoft Teams. Now let's begin this brainstorming session. I would like to start by providing some framing for the brainstorming session. This top toolbar is the greatest place to do it. I would like to add some text. I'm going to select the add text icon. Doing so inserts a text field and I'm able to start typing. However, it definitely makes sense to simply add some notes to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Again, I'm going to go up to the toolbar and add a note and I'm going to select the icon to add a note. As soon as I press this icon, this adds a note to my whiteboard and I'm about to start typing. The first reason that comes to mind and that is there's a charismatic founder. I'm happy this was our first since this, in my opinion, is most likely the important reason for opening a location. Now, once I type in my text, if I hover near the edge, I can now drag this note beneath my header. I'll put this here, then, and I'll insert a few more notes explaining why this is such a fantastic opportunity. I've inserted several notes explaining why this is such an amazing chance to open a Kevin Cookie company and all of them are visible here. Let's return to the toolbar now to explore our options. I have all these various pen tools available. I have four colors and I have an eraser as well. As part of this brainstorming session, let's say, I asked my team to check mark on the items that they believed were most likely related to this being a fantastic opportunity. Right now, anyone may enter and you might add check marks onto the whiteboard. It appears that my team has checked it, the charismatic founder, as the main driver and perhaps we will add one check mark on the unbeatable recipe. I could annotate now and do as many drawings on this whiteboard as I like, just like I might on a traditional whiteboard and if I reach the toolbar, I can use an eraser if we inadvertently annotate a part of the screen. Having now annotated the screen, I'd want to demonstrate a couple more of the tools we have. If I go to the top bar, we see the pan and zoom tool. If I click on this, I can now use my mouse to click on the whiteboard and the whiteboard is movable by me so I can pan around to the content that I want to look at. Along with panning around, I can zoom in and out using just a mouse wheel scroll. That is, so if I move the mouse wheel out I could scroll out and look at all of this real estate I have for brainstorming session. This is based on lot and lots of ideas. Should I move forward the mouse wheel, this will zoom in on the content and will enable me to go extremely close to every piece of content on my whiteboard. Now, that we've examined core editing and annotating functionality in Microsoft Whiteboard Web. Let's see what more we can accomplish. There is a settings gear when I reach the upper right corner. Let's make that click. I can export this whiteboard as a PNG from settings. Perhaps I should export it and get it printed out so that we can display it in our workplace. 
underneath that I can also toggle on or off whether a participant may edit. Let's now refer to our brainstorming session and I have this charismatic founder. Perhaps I should turn off it right now to prevent voters from switching to one of these other categories. Assume for the moment that our whiteboarding session is over and we've completed all of our desired brainstorming. I may now wrap up my presentation, thus this will end the whiteboard session. Let's suppose that we now adjourn the meeting and I want to return to my whiteboard content for some reason. You can easily return to Microsoft Teams on your calendar, so don't worry. Just go back to the meeting where this whiteboard session took place and click into the meeting. As soon as click into the meeting, you have all of these tabs across the top. On the far right, the whiteboard option is located. Should you select this the same whiteboard that we were just in will open as a result. Thus, this is a fairly simple method for returning. Microsoft Teams whiteboard is now available. As I previously stated, this is a web whiteboard because it lacks the Microsoft Whiteboard app's extensive capability. So let's explore what we can do by looking at the Microsoft Whiteboard app. Perhaps you're wondering, so, how can I download the Whiteboard app? Fortunately, this is where they put the button and opening in the app is quite convenient. Let's give it a click. When I click on Open in App, a lovely illustration opens. I can choose to download the Microsoft Whiteboard app, so I could download the app here. If I already own the application, within the app, I could also open my whiteboard. And suppose I have changed of mind and I had fun utilizing Teams whiteboard feature. I could just keep using it. Now let's select Get the App. As soon as I select Get the App, I'm directed to the Microsoft Store by this and the Microsoft whiteboard appears. If you haven't used the app yet, it is installable, along with if you already have it. It is yours to launch. I've installed the app already. I'm going to start right now. I'm now in the Microsoft Whiteboard app and I pointed them that it had a lot more features than what's available on the web. I'll go over some of the more significant variations. I end up on the Microsoft Whiteboard start page as a result. If I click over here, I'll be dropped into a fresh whiteboard by this. Alternatively, I could click this to jump into an already existing whiteboard. With an existing whiteboard, in addition to being able to open it, there are a few other things I could do with it. Should I select the context menu located here, I can extend an invitation to other people to collaborate with me on that whiteboard. The whiteboard is exportable as well. Within the whiteboard application, I have several more export possibilities. I could only export as a PNG on the web. Within the app, I could export as an SVG as well and I could delete it and this is where I could rename the whiteboard. Thus, Refrain from diving into this whiteboard. Let's begin the next one. This leaves me staring at a blank Microsoft whiteboard once more. Now let's examine a few of the new features and the differences are from the whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. The controls by default are down on the bottom. Let's go over your options in this situation. After I press the first button, this opens up inking mode and just like on the web. I have my four core colors with the addition of some additional colors and a highlighter is also with me. Still, a lot of that is fairly comparable. I now have a ruler, which is one of the main changes. Click the ruler now. This inserts a ruler on my whiteboard as well as if I press the pen. I could draw a line that was exactly straight with the ruler. I know what you're thinking, how can I change the ruler's degrees? If you're using a touchscreen, all you have to do is press down on the ruler to change its degree of adjustment. In a PC, you could use your mouse wheel while hovering over the ruler to adjust the degree so I will set it to zero degrees. And I'm able to draw an absolutely straight line here. In addition to the ruler, I also have a selection tool here that allows me to select the lines I just drew and I could undo and redo. To return, click on the check mark located on the left side. Once more on the main screen, I have a text tool as well. Let's give it a click. I'm now able to type in some text. All I'm going to do is type yay. My text can be repositioned to any desired position once it has been typed in. Here are a few of the other features we have available. When we click on the text you see this control area up here above it. You may enjoy the many texts that users submit. Thus, particularly when working in with others and someone comes up with a brainstorms idea. You can give it thumbs up or in a sense vote for different ideas. Along with voting, I can select several colors for my text. I can copy it, 
delete it and I have a few additional controls on the right hand side. Now, similarly to the web whiteboard below, inserting a note is as easy as it is on the web. I can move this note to whatever location I choose. Even so, this is also one of the key differences. I can also like it and I could adjust the background color of my note. Now, along with inserting notes, if we go back down to the bar, I am also able to add images. Images menu appears as a result. I could use my camera, bin, or even my PC to import pictures. Let's get a picture straight from the camera. Upon clicking the image, I can click on several different controls. In true brainstorming fashion, if I wanted to look more like, say, a scribble on a whiteboard, I am able to select the first icon and it will only perform an ink grab. Thus, if you imagine me as a blob of ink, it appears that this is how I would appear. I will undo this. You may also give a thumb up and there is a background locking option. When I click on this, it indicates that I can now put content over my photo because the photos in a sense has become the part of the background. On the photo, I can right click and I can undo it. Aligning objects is now quite simple when using the whiteboard app, which is one of its wonderful features. You can see my photo being moved around here. On my whiteboard, I can align it with other content. For example, I have my note and I have my picture and this is helping me top align both of these objects. I'm inserting items on my whiteboard right now. I could go down to the controls and I could insert a picture, I could insert text, I could change to the drawing tool. On the other hand, do it while working on your whiteboard is even simpler. All you have to do is right click and all of the same controls that are available on the bottom bar are also accessible here. There's this plus sign below. The insert menu is this. Upon clicking this, a variety of content types that we could easily insert appear. Let's examine and identify a few of these. I could add a note grid. A note grid is a group of notes collection in an elegant container, sort of a lovely way to group your notes. Let's examine what a list is. When I insert a list, it's precisely formatted, which makes it a little easier for you to organize your content during brainstorming than it could be if you did it alone. Let's look at the follow-ups list next. The follow-ups look a lot like my list to me, but they include a few extra columns, such sign to and also the number of likes. Back within the insert menu, I'm also able to utilize several templates. There are a ton of templates on the right side when I click on the templates. They have templates for brainstorming, a Kanban board, a retrospective and effective meeting, SWOT analysis. With all these various template kinds, the list is endless. For the sake of demonstration, let us click on Persona Builder. This is starting to get really elegant. This is leveraging notes, groups, lists, and it brings them all together in the form of a template. Furthermore, it's a quite pleasant approach to start a brainstorming session without having to set anything up beforehand. If you've previously conducted physical brainstorming session on whiteboards, usually there is some upfront work required. With templates, you eliminate all of that work and you make brainstorming super easy. I've inserted a lot of stuff now and I've demonstrated a good deal of the essential features you may be unsure of. Well, working with people is quite simple in Microsoft Teams. All you have to do is call a meeting and get to work. How do you use Microsoft Whiteboard to collaborate with others? In the upper right corner, you have this person icon with a plus. You can invite people to work with you on this whiteboard by clicking on this. All you have to do is click on this toggle to enable web sharing. If say you're in a Teams meeting, a Skype meeting, a Zoom meeting, you can leverage Microsoft Whiteboard. It is necessary for you to copy this link, which you may do by clicking on it and then sending it through chat and everyone can join the whiteboarding session. Assume you have finished sharing your whiteboard, this can also be toggled off and this will revoke the sharing link. We've now covered a large portion of Microsoft Whiteboard's basic features, but Whiteboard comes with a couple of neat features. I want to talk a little bit about those now. If we navigate to the upper right corner, the settings menu or the hamburger menu is available. Let's give it a click. You could turn on the active pen here. Let's imagine that you are utilizing a pen and a surface device. You could write on the whiteboard with a pen. Additionally, there is a something called ink to shape and ink to table. Let's examine how this ink to shape to see how this works. Whenever I return to the whiteboard, I currently have the pen tool selected. Allow me to attempt drawing a square as best I can. That's quite good. 
Yes, but into shape finishes the job for me. I'll draw my best try at a triangle, which turns into a flawless triangle in this case. That's really nice. Back in the settings menu, I can also turn the object snapping on and off. When I inserted the picture, I was able to snap it to other objects that were already on the whiteboard, so pretty nice one to use. Below that, I can export this. As I previously stated, one advantage of utilizing the Microsoft Whiteboard app is that you can export as a PNG, but you can also export as an SVG or a vector graphic, so the quality is much higher than exporting as a PNG. If I want to print out my brainstorming session from the whiteboard and truly put it up on the wall, SVG is the way to go now. Back in the main menu, with a few more controls I have, I could format the background. Imagine that I would prefer a different color you know, whites, a little harsh on the eyes. Additionally, I may select several grid backgrounds to assist you with any kind of Microsoft whiteboard session that you are hosting. If you found this video helpful, a quick subscribe would mean a lot to us. Thanks for watching.